Fresh meat. It can't be bargained with, it can't be reasoned with, it doesn't feel pity or remorse or fear, and it absolutely will not stop ever until you are dead on today's episode of Playing With Fear. Welcome to Joe Blow Horror Originals Playing With Fear, where we take a look at some of the landmark horror titles throughout the history of gaming. Who doesn't love a little sci-fi mixed in with their horror? The Terminator franchise is a big one, and there are so many different directions to take the discussion in. Today we will look at the games of The Terminator from 1984. James Cameron wasn't always the king of the world, blue alien creating, unobtainium, er, obtainer that he is today. Like many big filmmakers, he was actually a disciple of the living legend Roger Corman. On top of that, he began his career, well mostly, as a production designer for a handful of well-known movies. He was art director on Battle Beyond the Stars, special effects maker on Escape from New York, and full-on production designer for Galaxy of Terror. His work really stands out amongst other films of the time and can be seen with many of his future projects. His first time directing turned out to be by complete accident. He was serving as special effects director for the So Bad It's Good sequel, Piranha 2 The Spawning, when the film's director, Miller Drake, bailed as the main producer was just too difficult to work with. Cameron was given the opportunity to take this on as his first full-length film, and he did, but he also felt like there was little to no creative control behind the project, as he too had to deal with controlling producer Ovidio Asantas. The movie doesn't really have any of the hallmark creative choices that come along with Cameron films, but he would find a good friend in one of the film's leads, Lance Henriksen. His working relationship with Lance aside, the best thing to come out of working on Piranha 2 was a nightmare that he had that would later become the basis for his most famous work. He would write the script and sell it for next to nothing on the agreement that he would also get to direct. And that's how we were given the sci-fi masterpiece The Terminator. Starring his future wife Linda Hamilton, Michael Bean, and of course a career-altering role for Arnold Schwarzenegger, The Terminator follows the killing machine sent back in time to kill Sarah Connor and prevent the birth of her son who would miraculously lead the human resistance. It's full of music, dialogue, set pieces, and characters that would go on to live forever in the annals of pop culture. The movie would be a massive success, making $78 million on a $6 million budget, and inspiring a slew of copycats. One hilarious example being the Bruno Mattei knockoff film that would copy both Cameron's Terminator and sequel to Alien called Shocking Dark. Though in Italy, it would be hilariously called Terminator 2. Hey, I think this guy's a couple cans short of a six-pack. You're close. Give them to me. Now. Everyone involved would go on to fairly stellar careers with Hamilton, Henriksen, Arnold, Bean, and Paxton, all going on to work with Cameron on projects, while Cameron himself would helm some of the most fun and successful films of all time. He would direct Aliens, Terminator 2, True Lies, The Abyss, Titanic, and Avatar, with several sequels coming in the next decade or so. He also wrote Rambo First Blood 2 with Sly Stallone, and is credited in some way on every Terminator or Alien video game ever created. The movie itself would have quite the legacy, with five film sequels, well, kind of sequels, a solid TV show, toys, comics, novels, and video games. I'm talking a metric crap ton of video games. So as I said earlier, today we're going to discuss just the ones based on the first film, while saving the rest for another day. The first two game appearances are kind of a cheat. One of these is an unlicensed cameo in the Sega game Revenge of Shinobi from 1989. This game was savage in its disregard for copyright law, and its bosses include the likes of Godzilla, Spider-Man, and of course the Terminator. Additional release versions of the game would include patches that would change the color scheme or shape of the sprite, but you can still find the ROMs that have them included. The second game was a case of what could have been. Have you ever heard of the Nintendo game Journey to Silius? It's kind of a hidden gem within the retro community that was released by our friends at Sunsoft. You know, the folks with the really good Gremlin games. Released in 1990, this was originally going to be a game based off the first Terminator film, but the license would fall through, leaving us with a really solid sci-fi action game. It's available to play right now on the Switch Online service, and you can just kind of pretend you're playing through a Terminator game. It's honestly better than a few of the ones coming up. The first official title to be made on the franchise was The Terminator, you're gonna see that a lot, made for the MS-DOS in 1991. The game is almost completely forgotten to time, but as an interesting factoid of being developed and published by Bethesda Softworks. In fact, it was their third game to come out after the first two entries in their Wayne Gretzky hockey trilogy of games. The game lets you take control of either the T-800 or Kyle Reese. It's kind of a neat touch to allow the player to be in control of the Terminator, as most games would allow you only be the hero. If you are the Terminator, you need to hunt down Kyle Reese and Sarah Connor to kill the Resistance before it starts, and if you're Reese, you need to stop the Terminator from killing Sarah and yourself. 
It's in a first-person perspective that gives you a fairly complicated HUD for the time with a lot going on. It shows you the main screen with what you're looking at, as well as a compass, a box with messages and any actions or observations, your weapons, ammo, speed, and even a close-up of any action that's far away from the main screen. You start with clothes, unlike in the movie, but you need to get money, medication, and weapons. You do this by entering one of the many types of buildings that are littered across the map. The map itself is modeled after 80s LA, and they did a great job adding landmarks and trying to make it feel as accurate as possible. The game also can be seen as an early version of Elder Scrolls or Fallout with the ability to fast travel, and honestly just how the game looks, primitive as it may be. There isn't much in the way of graphics, sound, or music to speak of in-game, but there are opening cutscenes and ending titles too for the various ways the game can end. If you link up two computers, you can even play two players on this game. The game did okay sales-wise, and reviewers either loved it with above-average scores or hated it with a passion. For my money, the game was a tad overly complicated, but also ahead of its time. It's a fun and short time to go through it, and it has the distinction of being the very first Terminator game. 1992 would give us two very different Terminator game experiences, one on the NES and one on the Sega Genesis. Hardly apples to apples here, as the Genesis was the more adult console that was running 16 bits, while the NES was the much more family-friendly console that was only able to run 8 bits. The Sega version would give us our first taste of the complete journey of the movie. Right away, the player is hit with the Genesis tinny sound version of the Terminator theme, and with a credits roll that fits perfectly with the series. This is already going to be a better, more accurate version. Well, sort of, than what we already got, and in a couple of cases, what was to come. The game puts you in control of Kyle Reese in the apocalyptic future Los Angeles, as he sets out on his quest to go back in time and protect Sarah Connor. The first level is a noticeably fast experience, with Kyle lobbing grenades like a madman at non-Arnold Terminators and other various Skynet robot baddies. You work your way down until you finally get what is one of the most overpowered guns I've ever seen. You'd think grenades would be the best choice to take out the machines, but this gun just shreds them. After blowing up Skynet and making it back in time, literally, Kyle is now outfitted with his jacket and shotgun combo. Blasting his way through cops and robbers alike, though the game is kind enough to not have the police die when you shoot them, he makes it to a phone booth and then a club where Sarah narrowly escapes the Terminator. Kyle explains to Sarah the very normal, everyday situation they find themselves in in an animated slide, and they both end up in the police station where Kyle has to battle his way to her. After that, it's the final stage where the heroes lure the almost defeated half T-800 into a crusher. The game looks and sounds good, though it has a very Genesis aesthetic if that bothers you. The gameplay itself is a little samey across all four levels, but the action is non-stop with Kyle feeling very much like the badass he is in the movie. While it doesn't feel exactly like the isolation and dread the movie presents, you have to fill the enemy roster with something in a 1992 action video game. Probe Software, who would later fold into Acclaim Entertainment, developed the game, which was produced by Virgin. Probe would have an interesting mix of titles like Alien 3, Primal Rage, and Judge Dredd, while Virgin would produce nearly 100 titles from 1983 to 2002. Striking while the property was hot, Nintendo would also put out their own take on the game in their 8-bit console first. Terminator on the NES was developed by Radical Entertainment and published by Mindscape and Bethesda Softworks, who had the license for quite some time. Radical would have a very spotty first few years making games like Mario is Missing, Mario's Time Machine, and the much derided Wayne's World license title, but would eventually figure it out on later console generations. They released some all-time classics including Simpsons Hit and Run, Crash Tag Team Racing, and the two prototype games. Mindscape never had a singularly famous IP, but would publish a prolific number of games for a better part of a decade. The NES version tries to do the same thing with its design, but unfortunately falls flat. The graphics, gameplay, sound, and music design all pale in comparison to the Genesis game. And I hear you say that that sounds unfair, but look at what other games were able to accomplish on the same hardware. Look at Journey to Silius. It's a Terminator game without being a license and does it better while being released before this one. You follow the same basic story with Reese finding his way to the time machine first, through sewers for some reason, followed by the dog, punk, and police-filled streets of LA, a mall, the police station, and finally the factory. Credit where credit is due, you just see a lot of Terminator variants, especially in the future levels, and these models are a tad suicidal as the AI has them jumping off to their doom any chance they get. There are also a few vehicle levels thrown in to break up the gameplay loop, and while they aren't long or particularly involving, at least it's something the Genesis game does not have. While the game isn't particularly fun, it does give NES players their only taste of the Terminator franchise. Well, with the license anyway. And I have to say, it's actually better than what the SNES would do in the very next year. Developed by Grey Matter and published again by Mindscape, the Terminator would find itself on the Super Nintendo just a year after its older sibling console had its own truncated version. 
Grey Matter, who would give us games based on Dirty Harry, Mad Max, and more kid-friendly fare like Captain Planet, would attempt to learn from the Genesis game in terms of gameplay look and style. The first level looks good and captures the feel of the Skynet Apocalypse much better than the NES game, but it goes downhill from there. The gameplay is way too repetitive. Probably because all the levels are so long after the first level, the look and sound just don't hit right. I'm a Super Nintendo apologist through and through, but this is the case of Genesis does what Nintendo don't. And oh boy, just wait till the next one. The level structure follows the previous entries with Future LA, 1984 LA, the police station, and finally the factory, with a vehicle chase thrown in for good measure. The main problems are that the game is just much too difficult, and the LA level takes nearly 30 minutes of the game's 45 minute runtime. I mean, that's if you're good, the game's pretty impossible as is. Also, if I never have to hear Kyle call out Sarah's name in the police station again, it will be too soon. Sarah! It should have been a cool touch, but it's annoying at best and distracting at worst. The game doesn't all look and sound bad, but bad outweighs the good, and the sprite for Kyle in the second stage looks like it was drawn by Cran for some reason. Again, looking at the bright spots, this is the only game that shows Kyle dying in it as he puts the pipe bomb in the Terminator's waist to blow it up. Even with that piece of good comes the fact that this is also the only game that doesn't have you crush the exoskeleton like you do in the movie. Already having the best Terminator game on consoles, Sega would up the ante even more by releasing essentially an upgraded version on their CD attachment to the Genesis. Just in time for Christmas 1993, Virgin Games would both develop and publish the Terminator for the Sega CD. This game rules. Right from the start we hear real CD music and see clips from the actual movie. Sure, it's compressed all to hell and has no dialogue or sound effects in the clips, but still, this was mind-blowing at the time. The game follows the same story we've seen from the other games covering the first film, but it adds in so much more. It is easily the best looking game in terms of characters, animation, background and lighting, as well as sound and music. The music in particular took advantage of the CD aspect of the Sega CD and gives composer Tommy Tallarico his finest stage yet. In addition to looking the best, this game extends all of its levels. Where the previous game had one level, this version breaks them down into three stages without losing any of the action. Somehow adding levels doesn't make the game feel overly long, something the SNES version could have learned from. You get the apocalyptic future, the streets of LA where you kill every punk and hair metal band in sight, the nightclub, the best representation of the police shootout where the Terminator actually follows you around, and finally the factory where Sarah actually gets to crush the stalker. I could nitpick about small things here and there, but honestly, not only is this game the best representation of the first film on home consoles, it's one of the best games on the Sega CD console in general. The music, gameplay, visuals, and sound all mesh to become the definitive Terminator game experience. Go play it, find it, play it now. And finally, we have the Terminator released for the Atari Home Computer System in 1993, and no, you know what? I'm not ending on this game after the Stone Cold Classic Sega CD game. This game is not good and should be missed, just look at it! Terminator video games, like the eponymous machine, would not stop after the first film. There are games based on every movie and then some. Games based off his standoff with Robocop and all manner of ones simply based in the universe that Cameron created have been made and continue to be produced with some in development today. The only one that's playable today by conventional means is Journey to Silius on the Switch online system, but the ROMs for everything covered can be found online. If I had to suggest a top three, I'd say start with the Sega CD game, Move over to the game that never was with Journey to Silius, then for something completely different, dive into Bethesda's early PC offering. The rest are play at your own risk, or for Terminator games completionists only. Which of these games was your first intro into Terminator video games? Or was it something different? Which one was your favorite? Let us know in the comments and we'll see you on the next episode of Playing With Fear. I'll be back.